So what is going on everybody? My name is Mehul and welcome to your 24th React Shares tutorial in which I'll be completing this tic-tac-toe game by fixing the problem that uh, the game is continued even after we have ended the game and by implementing a very stupid and dumb computer which just randomly picks any square and uh, places the thing. Right, so let's get started and uh, to begin with I'm gonna move the turn and the game ended to the game state because it kind of makes more sense to me right there so we can now make a very sensible replacement here so this dot game state dot turn and then we can say this dot game state dot turn and this dot rather we just don't need that this dot game state dot turn is equal to this thing right and uh, if we take a look yeah that looks fine and then finally for game ended we do not need that here we can pretty much just say this dot game state game state dot game ended is equal to true and we can just copy it a couple of more times here and uh, finally we can say that if this dot game state dot game ended then just return right so now if we click on cross circle cross circle and cross match one by x and we cannot play anymore perfect right so now how do we go about implementing the cpu logic well what we can do is that actually if we take a look then our clicked even is kind of perfect once we provide it this event object it doesn't actually care if that event was uh, fired by a human click or a CPU right so what we can do is instead of passing this as an event what we can say is that this is a box to make more sense right we are passing in a box inside which inside the click event which box we clicked so I'm gonna make some replacements here I'm gonna replace event.target with box and uh, let's just see if we have any other replacement to make here no not really so right here inside this dot clicked e i can pass in this dot clicked e dot target so essentially we are just passing that reference to that box inside this click event and now what we can do is pretty much call this click event ourselves for computer to fake it right so what i can do is that since we begin with a cross i guess right so if this dot game state dot turn is equal to o right that means that this time it's the turn of uh, cpu right now what I'm gonna do is actually generate a random number and uh, we're gonna see if that checkboard is empty or not so we can just place another check and say that uh, this dot game state dot game ended obviously we do not want to play if the game has already ended so I'm gonna say do var random and uh, this would be math dot floor and actually there's a formula for this uh, but for any range for example if you want to have numbers between 0 and 8 you can just do math.floor math.random times that number plus 1 and uh, you would pretty much get every time the number between 0 and uh, 8 right so you can see that we get 8 as maximum and that's the maximum we'll get so I'm gonna say do this while this dot game state and uh, we have the board right with us so game state dot board random is not equal to empty so essentially what we are doing here is we are computing a random number as long as we do not get an empty square right so if let's just say these three squares are filled so if 
computer by chance generates number zero so it is already filled right we do not want that we want to have any number between um, this these three or you know anything like that so we are just looping it over so that uh, we get an empty box and uh, once we have that what we can do is say clicked or rather this dot clicked and I'm gonna say document dot query select true all and we're gonna query select the square and then we're gonna pass in the um, random here or uh, what else you could have done is that you could have selected this with data square with the appropriate number which is the same thing as long as we are not messing with the DOM right so we are passing the reference to that particular element and we are now calling this clicked event manually we are faking this event from the computer side right so now if we take a look and if I hit this one, you can see that computer automatically adds an O here. This one, uh, let's go with this one. Let's just say I go with this one and this one. Right, so the match is won by X. Fair enough. And if I reload this one more time, let's just play one more game. Match is again won by X. I'm trying to draw a match. Uh, well, it's uh, hard to draw a match, I guess. Okay. So. Match is won by O. Okay, so match is drawn, right? So all the three systems are working properly. Now, what the problem is, is that the move of computer, computer's turn is almost instantaneous, right? So, it kind of looks laggy, uh, not really laggy because it's instantaneous, but it kind of gives a feel that you are not going to lose anyhow, right? Uh, you're not going to win from computer, right? So, what we can do is we can introduce a delay here by saying set timeout. And uh, right here, I'm going to make use of this fat arrow notation so that we do not need to um, take reference of this div, this this in some other variable. And uh, it's just that if you do not know why I'm making use of this fat arrow and not function, it's just that we would not be able to make use of this this inside this set timeout without uh, doing something like uh, or um this backup is equal to this and then doing this backup right here instead of this but since we're making use of this fat arrow notation so this refers to the parent context only and not the function one so if we take a look now what we would see is that uh, our action is delayed but on the other hand, user would itself have the ability to click on the any of the box in the time CPU is making a decision, right? So we want to stop that. So we, what we can do is we can create another one inside game state only and we can say game locked is false. And uh, what we can do is uh, right here, we can say this dot game state dot game locked is true and uh, right here just before this is clicked we can say game state dot game locked is equal to false and finally we can say or this dot game state dot game locked right so if I save it now and I click here so you can see computer turns let's it turn goes its turn or plays its turn after two seconds and that is a lot of delay so let's just drop it to one here you see well that's actually one smart computer right and uh, you can see that the match is drawn so and again i cannot click meanwhile the computer is making a decision right 
so even if I try to you can see nothing happens as long as computer hasn't made a decision okay so yep that's pretty much it for this tutorial and this is how the game looks like I'll leave the source code as a link in the description so that you can just play around with it and uh, recommend any improvements if you want so yeah that's all for this one and if you liked it then don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching i'll see you then in the next one